Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 72. The first draft of anything is crap, but it's indefinitely better than no draft at all. Ben Arnett. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Don't forget to head over to freefilmbook.com. That's freefilmbook.com to download your free film audiobook from Audible. And today's show is sponsored by the all-new Indie Film Hustles Online Film School, which is a brand new version of the school. It has a ton of courses covering not only cinematography, directing, screenwriting, the business of screenwriting, um, but also is covering social media, marketing, and how to brand yourself as a filmmaker or as an artist. It has a ton of different courses, and we're going to be adding new stuff all the time. So check it out at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash film school. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash film school. So today I wanted to talk about the markability of your idea or your screenplay, specifically your screenplay. You know, a lot of people always go off and, you know, spend six months, a year, even longer, either writing a screenplay, making a movie, and they don't even understand if this is even marketable, if it's something that the marketplace wants or is is positioned in a place that you can sell it. You know, I've seen so many filmmakers go off and make a movie and spend six months, a year, two years of their lives putting stuff together, and they have no idea if the, the idea the movie is even marketable. And it's a waste, man. And I and I hate. For, and again, it all depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to just put out art or trying to do experiments and keep the budgets low, and you could do whatever you want, then that's fine. Go for it. But if you're spending, you know, a, a substantial amount of money, and it takes you a year or two of your life, and you haven't even tested to see if this is even a marketable idea, uh, my God, it's just such a waste. So please, always test. Your ideas go off and do a little, uh, do a little research and see if the marketplace is interested in your kind of movie, and if they if it is interested in your idea, do you need stars attached, things like that, to make it a marketable thing. Now, where you start with this whole idea is with the screenplay, with the idea. Is this a marketable idea or a marketable screenplay? So if you're only a screenwriter, listen up because this is going to be very, very valuable information, um, and also. Filmmakers who are screenwriters slash directors slash producers, definitely perk your ears up because you're going to get some knowledge bombs thrown at you right now. So Paul Castro, the writer of August Rush and I have put together a course called The Million Dollar Business of Screenwriting. Now, I'm going to give you a one of the lessons that he teaches in this course called the, Is Your Screenplay Marketable? What is the marketability of your screenplay? So I wanted to give you a, a kind of a sneak peek of the course in this podcast and listen to one of these amazing lectures that Paul does in this in this uh, course. Now, this is not just for screenwriters. This is also for directors, producers, filmmakers who have ideas that they might want to get fleshed out or a movie that they're about to start. Definitely listen to what Paul says because it might save you years of your life, let alone Uh, thousands and thousands or even maybe even millions of dollars depending on the level you're at and at the end of the episode i'll give you a special link to get the course at a substantial discount so sit back and get ready to get your minds blown i wanted to talk to you about the marketability of your idea so writers we all have a peppering of all sorts of ideas Uh, bombarding our psyche and our soul often and uh, most of the time every day, at least for for me and many of my friends. So how do you choose an idea? Well, I think it's important to take your top three ideas and be really honest with yourself. Is it marketable? Because there are ideas out there that are, you know, something that's interesting to me may not be interesting to the world. So I wrote a script about a fugu chef one time, the Japanese puffer blowfish, which is the poisonous fish. And I love this story. And it got some traction, but nobody ever bought it. And the writing experience was a value for sure. But I could have spent those eight weeks to 12 weeks to eventually six months working on something that was much more marketable. So what makes a marketable screenplay that's going to put you in the best possible position to sell it? 
So these days, it is a true story. For some reason, Hollywood and actors, movie stars, like to play something that actually happened. So how do you acquire that? Well, you acquire it from source material. What is source material? It's from a magazine, a book, an article, something you've seen in the news. Now, you may be saying, yeah, Paul, that's great, but I'm a new screenwriter. How am I going to acquire that? Well, from my experience, I have seen that book authors are a lot more accessible and open than, say, trying to get to a movie star. So if you approached a book author, notice I said he or she, not the agent, because agents are wonderful, but they're the gatekeepers. They're trying to protect that person, and they're trying to get them paid, understandably so. But if you approach a book author and show your passion for the material, have a plan for how you're going to adapt it from book to the big screen, and oh, by the way, you're going to do this for free as long as that he or she gives you a free option, and if the material, once you're done with it, is at a level of vibrancy and at a high frequency of quality, that that person says, yes, this is what this is my book on, on screen, in a screenplay form, that can eventually make it to the big screen, yeah, I would love to see it. You did a great job. If they agree to that, then you go forward as a team to sell the entire project, and it costs you time and sweat equity. That can be done. And most writers are a bit trepidatious and shy and circumspect in going that route because they feel like, well, what value do I have to add? Well, I'm here to tell you, you have a lot. You're a creative. All right? That's invaluable. And if you're going to be brave enough to approach this person and coming from a good place, you're not trying to rip anyone off. You're trying to add value with your talent and creativity. You can acquire some wonderful stories. Right? So the market is very friendly towards a true story, something that's current. Is it a, like these days you hear a lot of stories about autism, which is a very important subject. All right. If there's something that is relevant to the science world as far as a curable disease, something that has an energy beyond just a true story. All right. An Olympic hopeful who blah, 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 fill in the blank. Maybe there's something in your hometown, some, somebody that nobody even knew about this person. And you could bring that story to fruition through a screenplay. Where there's a will, there's a relative, and there's also a way. So I would encourage you to start looking for true stories, something from source material. If there's a book that you saw when you were, uh, you read when you were a little kid, and you, why hasn't this ever been a movie? Then that's a voice, a little God wink that's telling you to pursue it. So your job now is to spend the next, I'm sorry, not one hour, two hours going to Google, going to your Rolodex, going to your hometown, going through all your resources to identify a true story that you can bring to fruition through the craft of screenwriting. So you have two hours. Make sure uh, you hit the restroom, get some water, get some uh, almonds, whatever you do, and get prepared because two hours and you're going to unveil the gem that you were meant to write through a true story from source material, okay? In three, two, one, write it. I'll tell you what, I learned a ton from Paul while I was working with him on this course. I mean, he goes over things like how to workshop your screenplay, which I had never heard of, this whole technique of how he actually workshops his screenplay so he can get feedback and, and make it better. It's it's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, how to submit to an agent, how to get your screenplay to an agent, uh, pitching, how to read a room, not read a person, but actually read a room, uh, which is amazing. Um, how to write different kinds of screenplays from 30-minute sitcoms to one-hour dramas, uh, residuals, the WGA, uh, writing assignments, and so on. I mean, it's it's a pretty dense course on the business of screenwriting and how to actually make a living being a screenwriter, but again, a lot of the concepts and things that Paul talks about for screenwriters can easily be translated to filmmakers. So definitely a course to take a listen to. And as promised, 
I am going to give you a discount code. So all you have to do is go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash screenwriting25. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash screenwriting25, and you'll get the course for 25 bucks. I mean, that is a absolute steal. I'm not, not even playing around, guys. It's so dense. And there's some more preview. Uh, when you go to that link, you'll see a few more uh, lessons that you can kind of preview and take a listen to. Well, well worth it, guys. So I hope you uh, got a lot out of this episode. And like I said before uh, on other episodes, I am really trying to bring the highest quality um, film courses uh, and knowledge to you guys through our podcast, through our blog, and through these online courses that we're uh, creating for you. And by buying these online courses, you're supporting the show, you're supporting Indie Film Hustle and what we're trying to do and spread all of this valuable knowledge uh, to you guys and to indie filmmakers who really need it because, I was, like I said, the reason I started this whole thing is I was just tired of seeing so many filmmakers just not making it and getting eaten up and chewed up by the film industry. And I wanted to give out as much free information as I could, but also create really top and next level courses that will take that knowledge to another place. So by by buying this, uh, buying these courses from us, you really help us support what I'm trying to do at Indie Film Hustle. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart, guys. And also, there is a 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. So if you just want to listen to it, give it a shot. But it's definitely worth it. All right, guys? So um, as always, please head over to filmmakingpodcast.com and leave us an honest review of the show. It really helps us out a lot. And don't forget to go and sign up for our free Facebook group uh, so you can talk to all the other tribe members and be part of the Indie Film Hustle community. Share your information, share your knowledge, share your uh, what you're shooting, what you're making, all that kind of stuff, and ask questions. That's why I created it. So it is a vibrant, wonderful community that we're building slowly, but surely we're getting close to 5,000 members already uh, at the Facebook group. So please head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Facebook and sign up. It is free. So as always, guys, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 